Today's topic is on diseases of sheep and goats, small ruminants. If we are doing necropsies on small ruminants, it's usually an individual animal that is submitted uh, for identification of the cause of death or the cause of illness. As such, one should be aware that uh, many of the diseases that we can encounter in the large ruminant in cattle also may occur in the small ruminants as well as that small ruminants may have their own particular disease entities uh, that deserves knowledge and deserves to be recognized as such. I would like to <coughs> excuse me, introduce uh, the first two diseases associated with the central nervous system as being scrapey and swayback. Scrapey is a prion disease that has been described in sheep uh, for many decades, many decades ago by Dr. Hatlow. And it is clinically characterized by signs, abnormal signs such as opistotonus, tremor, ataxia, head tilt. And as such, these s clinical signs uh, may not necessarily indicate scrapie, but uh, other CNS diseases as well as one should be aware. A component associated with animal suffering from scrapie is a loss of wool due to constant brushing and rubbing against certain uh, stiff <coughs> areas such as a wall or fence. Microscopically, the disease reveals itself as a vac vacuolar degeneration associated with the cytoplasm of neurons, more so than is seen in bovine spongiform encephalopathy, where the vacuolation is more present uh, within the neural pile. It is now possible to identify scrapie sheep entomotomally by performing biopsies from tissues such as tonsils or the conjunctiva and subjecting these biopsies to immunohistochemistry. We have markers uh, that bring the prion out for the microscopic identification. A second CNS disorder is known as swayback. It, animals may be born with uh, the dis disorder or show signs later on and it is due to a copper deficiency and it appears that copper and sheep really don't, do not match as we will see uh, that uh, there is a significant type of disease that is a result of too much copper uh, that uh, affects uh, a lot of sheep. Uh, but again, if it's a copper deficiency, it leads to changes in the brain that are characterized by severe cavitation and lysis associated with the white matter substance, mainly leaving somewhat the gray matter substance intact. Uh, a low magnification nicely shows the punched out areas associated with a neuropile and microscopically uh, it is associated uh, with a spongiosis mm, and even chromatolysis of certain neurons uh, as seen in this particular slide. Uh, again, swayback is associated with copper deficiency. Uh, Sheep have their own respiratory system diseases, starting with the upper respiratory tract, uh, the bot, estrus, ovis, usually is a saprophytic inhabitant of the sinuses and uh, uh, nasal cavities. However, on occasion, if there is a magnitude uh, of the butt flies, uh, an inflammatory reaction may extend into the brain and then typically these animals will show clinical signs of central nervous system disease. An interesting tumor has been described many decades ago in Barbados sheep, but apparently it's also in other breeds of sheep uh, that it occurs. Uh, the early descriptions uh, were with Barbados sheep kept in zoos in close confinement. 
uh, and resulted in the observation that the tumor suggests an agent in that uh, it could be and it was transmitted uh, to flock mates uh, in that same uh, flock and lately it has been recognized as some kind of retrovirus uh, that is involved. Uh, the disease entity is called transmissible nasal adenocarcinoma and indeed it is a malignant tumor even if it, at the gross level it reveals itself as only a space occupying lesion. On to lungs, the best known entity of pneumonia is ovine progressive pneumonia, a lentivirus induced diffuse pneumonia uh, that has acute and or chronic forms. Uh, it is characterized by a lung that does not collapse when exposed to air. It feels very firm and it is uh, present in a diffuse fashion. One can see in this lung uh, nicely rib impression indicating a filling scenario uh, that suggests uh, a, a obstruction of, of small airways as well as alveoli. On cut section, uh, the chronic pneumonia almost looks like a tumor. Uh, it is modeled and on palpation will, firm, will feel very firm. Uh, again, a modeled appearing infiltrate uh, on cut section that then microscopically is matched uh, by two features. One, a dense multifocal formation of lymphocytes almost forming lymphoid follicles and a type 2 proliferation uh, at the site of the alveoli uh, to form a very dense cellular infiltrate that matches the gross appearance. Uh, again, it is uh, recognized as a lentivirus. Other agents uh, that are involved in the formation and development of sheep pneumonia, uh, maybe bacteria such as Pastorella. Uh, it may be a virus on occasion such as an adenovirus or a syncytial respiratory virus. Uh, in younger animals one has to think of aspiration pneumonia, certainly if one sees a locally extensive format formation of uh, pneumonia. Uh, this was a case of Pastorella multocida, uh, a very common disorder that is mainly involving lymph nodes but is extending into surrounding parenchyma is Caseous lymph adenitis. Uh, we, we nicely have a markedly enlarged set of tracheobronchial lymph nodes and if one looks then into the pulmonary parenchyma one can appreciate nicely satellite abscessations and typically uh, the abscess on, abscess on cut section has a nice laminated structure in that it is a process of necrosis, inspissation, acute necrosis, inspissation, just very much like the growth of a tree. Uh, Coronabacterium alvis being responsible for caseous lymphadenitis is a saprophyte in sandy soils and likes somewhat the tropical subtropical uh, humidity and humid environments and it is picked up usually as a skin lesion that then migrates to regional lymph nodes and seeds out and disseminates into various organs uh, of the body not necessarily the lung. And here is a multifocal pneumonia suggesting a embolic pathogenesis and indeed that's what it was. It is a fungal infection which probably is a, a pathogen that secondarily takes advantage uh, of uh, an immune suppression or uh, starvation or <coughs> immunologically deranged animal. 
uh, it was recognized as being result of an Aspergillus infection. Sheep have their own lungworms, they're free species. Dictyocallus filaroides inhabiting the major airways. Protostrongulus refrescens inhabiting the uh, smaller large airways and malarious capillaries that uh, is depicted here. Uh, all of these three species have a direct life cycle and malaris capillaris larvae as well as adult inhabit the very distal uh, airways, the very the smallest airways as well as alveoli. As such they are very difficult to recognize the uh, Again, uh, it is almost impossible to uh, identify these little small red foci uh, as suggestive of verminous pneumonia until one looks at these uh, sections, at, the, at these areas microscopically to identify the parasite. Just like cows, the number one congenital cardiac malformation in sheep is a ventricular septal defect. Uh, this one m most likely was a functional one in that there is an interchange of blood uh, due to its size, estimated about three centimeters without a scale. And then white muscle disease uh, uh, and nutritional myodegeneration, just like in ruminants, uh, if it is affecting sheep, uh, it's usually the diaphragm as well as the muscles of the extremities. Uh, uh, rather than uh, certain muscle groups uh, that I presented uh, to be involved in nutritional myopathy in, in cattle. And it's a very typical uh, appearing change in that there is pallor. Uh, and n one has extreme difficulties to identify the ideal paintbrush-like pallor in muscles. It's usually a patchy uh, uh, pallor. Uh, liver and sheep hardly go together in that uh, a lot of uh, uh, insults to the liver uh, create a lot of problems to individual sheep and combined uh, to a whole flat flock of sheep. Uh, here is a very fatty liver and it immediately suggests uh, uh, ketosis and indeed uh, this liver uh, most likely is from a sheep that at least has twins, had twins or triplets. Uh, it's a result of a St status of hypoglycemia whereupon uh, fat is imported to the liver and there's a difficulty to export uh, such fat. Uh, so the net result is a severe accumulation of fatty substances within the liver. Such a liver would be very friable and on occasion would be susceptible to fractures leading to a hemoperitoneum. Uh, and again, the formation of ketone bodies uh, can be uh, uh, where is appreciated and associated with such a lipidosis, and these ke ketone bodies can be analyzed for in the urine. Facial eczema is a problem, just like in uh, cattle, that is associated with photosensitization. Uh, and leads to a scabby uh, ulcerative gangrenous uh, dermatitis, uh, if not taken care of, as you can see here. Uh, it, there's really a problem in uh, countries like New Zealand or Australia, and it follows somewhat the same principles as I developed for uh, cows. There are uh, three, at least in sheep, there are two only, I would think, uh, uh, mechanisms. Uh, one is the hepatotoxic form of photosensitization uh, and the other one would be a direct photosensitization due to uh, photosensitizing plants that are consumed such as buckwheat. I think the most prevalent form in sheep would be the hep hepatotoxic form. And there are a couple of scenarios uh, that uh, one uh, can encounter. First of all, uh, the liver does indicate features of pathology in that 
first it's a very swollen liver and it seems to be a little small liver uh, and on, on occasion it shows areas of discoloration uh, suggesting necrosis. The, the mechanism uh, for some of the uh, causes has been well explained based on the findings that uh, certain molds producing certain sensitizing substances. One that uh, is uh, frequently involved is Pyphomyces chatarum, a, a yeast that's forming sporodesmin, and sporodesmin uh, is then inducing the photosensitization. If one looks for evidence of Pyphomyces chatarum, one would like to see uh, the spores, and uh, here is a set of spores that one can uh, appreciate and it typically and has been defined as hand grenades, and I think that's a very good term. Uh, <coughs> it, it cannot com be confused with anything else apparently going into the literature. Uh, so if you see a hand grenade-like structure, think of Pyphomyces chatarum. Another liver disease in sheep is known as black disease. Its analog in cattle would be bacillary hemoglobinuria uh, due to clostridium Hemolyticum in sheep, it's a clostridium as well, but it's called clostridium novii and follows the same principle. Uh, it's a saprophyte of the liver. If the liver obtains a trauma, uh, the saprophytic form becomes a viable form uh, and has releases substances that causes necrosis in the liver, but also uh, hemolysis. I do not have a gross picture for what's known as white liver disease, uh, but this is a microscopic uh, picture showing a vacuolation, or even if you want to call it a lipidosis, associated with some biliary epithelium proliferation and maybe a little bit of an inflammation. White liver disease is a result of cobalt deficiency. And then uh, mycotoxins uh, uh, released from certain fun fungi, this one is heliotropic, he heliotropium, uh, does induce this changes of necrosis and depending on the duration and the dose, uh, uh, not all of the liver parenchyma is undergoing necrosis and degeneration. Uh, there is enough tissue left to induce something like a attempt of regeneration which this liver suggests to show there are nodules uh, in, in certain areas um, that obtain a different color. Um, I would think on the surface it's probably not readily visible but the cut section shows some discrete nodules uh, re being the result of a nodular regeneration. A really big disease is copper toxicosis and the sheep has a very low fresh threshold uh, and tolerance uh, towards copper. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, as little as 0 0.2 nanomoles per kilogram of body weight uh, may induce uh, entities, uh, disease entities or pathology associated with the liver and clinical signs associated with copper deficiency mainly being characterized by icterus, severe icterus, due to a severe hemolytic crisis. Uh, and here is such a generalized uh, icterus. Uh, one cannot miss it, obviously, uh, and it quickly and readily suggests copper toxicosis as cause. Uh, here again from the same sheep skinned, uh, it still has a nice yellow appearance. The liver is showing swollen, rounded edges, uh, a pallor, uh, and then the kidneys have a deep burgundy red appearance and the urine uh, would also have a red color suggesting uh, hemoglobinuria. Uh, a couple of uh, different etiologies associated uh, with the liver are abscessations again resulting most likely from infection with Coronibacterium ovis, and then certain parasites. 
Mm. Flukes, again, uh, play a role in uh, liver disorders. Hepatica, Facilla hepatica uh, being one of them. Uh, and in Europe, Dicrocilium lanceatum, uh, Dicrocilium dentricum, the lancet worm uh, is another one. Uh, this liver shows, again, uh, nice evidence of a, s a severe enlargement of bile ducts, a pipe stem-like uh, configuration, uh, and a very undulating cobblestone-like surface. Uh, here again, the prominence of the biliary system versus a relative reduction of the liver parenchyma proper. And one can uh, identify the flukes uh, if one carefully dissects the uh, distended bile ducts. And here is, again, an open gallbladder to show flukes as well as a melanin-like pigmentation. Uh, and then the relative s small size of the lancet worm uh, that has undergone phylogenetically a very nice pathway uh, to maintain the life cycle of uh, its life cycle uh, in that the uh, metasicaria um, are that, that ants are involved in the uh, uh, transmission of metasicaria uh, and the Metasicaria elicit a product uh, uh, that uh, is toxic to the ants. And once the ants are picking up the uh, metasicaria, they die and remain on the very top of the grass to be picked up by sheep. So I think uh, uh, Mother Nature has invented a very nice way of uh, transmission and a safe way of transmission as well. Uh, I think that type of uh, scenario may not be known uh, generally as far as the lancet worm is concerned. The French tapeworm is Trichonosoma uh, actinoides, Physonosoma actinoides, I'm sorry, Physonosoma actinoides. Uh, it inhabits the male bile ducts without causing any obstruction. And then intermediate uh, forms of tapeworms such as Echinococcus granulosa, as well as Sonurus, uh, uh, Tania sonurus, uh, uh, may involve the liver or may involve uh, the parenchyma surrounding the, uh, the liver. Uh, Cestricircus teniocollis uh, is depicted in this uh, slide as an intermediate uh, uh, parasite involving the liver. And Echinococcus granulosus uh, is also known as hydatid disease. And one can nicely see uh, a water back like uh, structure. And if one looks very hard, one can apparently, in, in some instances, appreciate Escolex and Proglottis, as you can see here. So once more, uh, two intermediate forms, Cystisarcus teniocollis, as well as Echinococcus granulosus, are involved uh, in terms of causing abscessations as well as cystic changes associated with the liver or the parenchyma around the liver. There are liver tumors that have been described uh, mainly at slaughter. And these are typically originating from the epithelium of the biliary tract and known as cholangiocarcinomas. Uh, one can appreciate perhaps the revelation that this is an epithelial derived tumor by the fact that uh, uh, there are umbilications uh, in certain areas of involvement. Uh, this tumor may spread to distant organs as well. Uh, the elementary system, some important diseases uh, to remember. One is associated with the oral cavities with a lip known as ORF, parapox, 
virus that uh, is also or may affect uh, people. Uh, it has to be differentiated from tumors. Uh, this is a squamous cell carcinoma. Uh, here again, uh, a very nasty looking flesh eating type of uh, squamous cell tumor. Orf, contagious eczema, uh, typically causes a proliferative dermatitis with radirex and uh, if one looks hard, cytoplasmic inclusions, one really has to look hard and again uh, it's a zoonotic virus in that uh, when it is jumping over to man it may cause these blisters as seen in these hands. Blue tongue again one more time, uh, a orbivirus that is transmitted by culicoides, uh, again uh, affecting and the tongue and other tissues as well basically has a preference for endothelium of blood vessels. And one of the so-called pathognomonic changes associated with blue tongue is an intermal rupture of major arteries, uh, in particular the pulmonary outflow tract. This is another important uh, disease uh, causing severe anemia and uh, at the level of uh, clinical, clinical pathology, hypoproteinemia, it's Haemonchus contortoris, which is a really very bad parasite that's difficult to handle and is affecting a lot of sheep, very difficult uh, to, to manage. Uh, and it, it is very typically then already showing its presence by the very white uh, color of the visible mucous membrane as seen here in, in the eye, sclera, uh, but everywhere internally in the body. And again, the presence of hypoproteinemia is reflected by edema in soft tissues, uh, nicely if and typically in the subcutis of the jaw but anywhere and everywhere else as well. Uh, this apomasum shows edema associated with the folds. Uh, a composite of uh, organs, uh, pallor of the liver, uh, pallor associated with the lung. Uh, again, a apomasitis and edema. Uh, and this is blood uh, collected from the apomasum. Uh, and if one looks very hard, one quickly can identify the culprit, the barber pole, Haemonchus contortus. Uh, another uh, very important disease is uh, enterotoxemia associated with Clostridium perfringens type D. It quickly reveals itself by multiple petechiations and ecchymosis affecting the cirrhosis surfaces. Uh, and a hallmark is to look for the famous fibrin tag associated with the pericardium. Uh, there is another change associated with the non-target uh, organ, and that's the kidney, pulpy kidney disease, uh, has been attached to uh, enterotoxemia. Uh, one has to be, however, very careful. Many times uh, the sheep necropsy is not a fresh one and the kidney quickly enters decomposition. So uh, I think people are shying away more and more from uh, making the diagnosis of enterotoxemia based on the presence of a pulpy kidney. But a second type of hallmark, in addition to the fibrin clot in the heart sac uh, may be a symmetrical bilateral hemorrhagic malacia associated with the thalamus internal capsule uh, and the midbrain and clinical pathologically the glucosuria. Uh, in order to identify uh, the culprit, I think one has to check for toxin, but a rough examination of feces may reveal a plethora and a, mon a monopopulation of medium-sized rods. 
Yonis disease uh, is a chronic wasting uh, disease. It certainly does affect sheep, uh, and it's a big problem in sheep raising countries such as Australia. Unlike in cattle, one has only very little gross evidence of Yonis disease. Uh, here may be the best to show the mucosal thickening. Uh, microscopically, it's no challenge. Uh, one can see a granulomatous inflammation and a plethora of clusters of acid fast organism by special stain. And then certain coccidia may induce a proliferative enteritis, in particular Imeria olingi. The Finnish land race sheep congenitally acquires a kidney disorder known as mesangial capillary glomerulonephritis. It has excited a lot of immunologists uh, as being an, anim an animal model, model for an immune-mediated disease. And indeed, uh, it is due to a complement deficiency, particularly as far as the C3 fragment is concerned. Uh, it does not really create, at the gross level, a significant change associated with the kidney, other than maybe uh, small dotted structures that one barely can recognize uh, at the cortex. And indeed, uh, microscopically, it uh, matches markedly enlarged glomeruli. Here is a involvement of the kidney uh, with caseous lymphadenitis, probably starting from regional lymph nodes and then seeding into the kidney as well. Rams frequently obstruct the lower urinary tract to induce a cystitis and the rupture uh, to induce a uro peritoneum, and it is due to the obstruction at the very, very tip of the penis, the known as urethral process, which is a very, very, very narrow passage uh, uh, in these animals. Brucellosis uh, can play a significant role in countries uh, where uh, it is difficult to control, and as far as the male is concerned, it unlike in maybe other species, uh, affects more or less the epididymis, uh, and particularly the tail of the epididymis. Diseases of the mammary gland uh, may be a problem, uh, a mastitis, uh, not quite as severe as in, in the dairy industry, but uh, nonetheless uh, it may lead to uh, a involvement of multiple use. Uh, the one that uh, created the name of blue bag is Staphylococcus aureus that one has to think of. Uh, it causes a necrotizing purulent mastitis and changes of blue discoloration as you can see uh, through the skin here. Uh, the severity of the involvement of the udder is seen on the cut section. Uh, severe necrosis somewhat sharply delineated uh, from uninvolved parenchyma. Uh, the other one that one has to think of is Pastorella multocita. So these two organisms uh, may involve uh, a herd in a severe fashion such that uh, the nutrition of the lambs is not guaranteed due to uh, a change in the milk consistency and uh, characteristics. Sheep has their own wards. Here is a papilloma uh, that was associated with the skin, but you also can see the papillomas forming in the esophagus, and if they assume a certain size, they may be responsible for esophageal obstruction. This is a case of intersusception due to the presence of nodular worms, esophagostomum columbianum, uh, and again, it may be just anecdotal. The two have been described to go together like uh, hand and gloves, and that uh, some kind of dysperistaltic motion leads to the telescoping of segments of the, of the intestinal uh, tract to cause an 
obstruction and an intersusception. Uh, and then finally, lymphosarcoma on occasion may affect uh, the viscera, such as the lymph nodes uh, and the urinary bladder, very strangely. Uh, I think if it is uh, affecting the lymph nodes, it's more associated with the mesenteric lymph nodes uh, than any other ones, and certainly cannot be very well appreciated associated with the superficial lymph nodes. Here is an enlarged pituitary in a sheep that suggests a tumor, and indeed on occasions adenomas uh, have been seen. On to goats now. Uh, a scabby dermatitis associated with the skin over the nose uh, and the conjunctiva and the lips may suggest ORF as well, uh, and indeed this could be easily a case of contagious eczema. Uh, but this is dermatophilosis, which may affect uh, the goat as well. And one also has to think of uh, internal changes associated with the blood vessels, as you can see here in the heart, resulting from bova malignant catarrhal fever, herpes virus uh, infection. Uh, here again, a scenario of a thick and scabby skin sh with combined with alopecia uh, in the tropical and subtropical climates easily should suggest infection with dermatophilosis. Listeria. And then a viral disease known as CAV, caprine arthritis, encephalitis virus, lentivirus, develops various changes in various organs depending on the age of the goat. If it's a young kid, uh, it is involving the CNS system mainly uh, to induce changes in the neuropile that uh, are spongiotic uh, as well as proliferative a gliosis and the loss of myelin calls upon the gator cells to clean up uh, the changes. In the adult form, it affects more of the joints, the lung, or the udder. As joint disease, it causes a synovitis, and if one is lucky, one can appreciate joint mouse. This is not the case here in this picture. The virus. Uh, it replicates a macrophages, and the macrophage calls upon lymphocytes, and at the microscopic level, uh, the changes associated with the joint is a synovitis, a lymphocytic, histiocytic synovitis. If it is a lung, it if it affects the lung, it's a diffuse pneumonia. Just like in progressive bovine pneumonia. And this was the last case that uh, I saw in, in a goat. It was a 12-year-old goat uh, that was proven to be positive, seropositive for CEA by ELISA. Uh, and during its life had uh, bouts of lameness and swelling of joints, but finally re uh, developed a respiratory disease. Uh, and that was a very nice indicator for the presence of persistence of the CA virus, the lentivirus, in that it created the diffuse, thickness, uncollapsed type of lung. And notice this little focus here. And at first glimpse, suggested the presence of a tumor. It was tissue and was clearly delineated from the rest of the lung by a different color and consistency. It was soft, elastic, really. And it turned out, surprisingly, to be a focus of cryptococcosis. And indeed, the association of CA 
pneumonia, diffuse pneumonia, and cryptococcosis has been established in the literature in a couple of goats. To me, cryptococcosis and goats is certainly something of a novelty, and it fooled me certainly too. I didn't recognize it as such until microscopically this tissue uh, that felt somewhat soft, elastic, and different from the rest of the texture of the lung was a very spongiotic tissue, and one can nicely see the yeasts, uh, and then some peculiar cells that sort of looked like foam cell macrophages. And in other sections, there were evidence of uh, mineralized corpuscles, such as seen here. Whether or not these are yeast structures uh, that uh, attracted mineral salts or not remains to be seen. Uh, here's sort of a beginning concretion uh, that is mineralized. And the main picture uh, of his lung was that of a type 2 cell pneumocyte proliferation that obstructed airways, and I do not have it here, in some areas alveolar proteinosis, which according to the literature is very suggestive of pneumonia resulting from lentivirus infection. Uh, a different terminology describing uh, the same entity of lentivirus pneumonia is Yaxicte or pulmonary adenomatosis. And again, it reveals a lung that almost looks like it conceals a neoplastic proliferation. Uh, it is a very knobby, nodular type of tissue resulting from an adenomatoid transformation of type 2 pneumocytes into a fetalization of the lung, again, uh, in the earlier literature being described to be associated with Jagsigte. And in some instances, it was also thought that in addition to the lentivirus, a herpes virus might be involved. And there are a couple of case reports in goats where indeed a pulmonary adenomatosis turned apparently into an adenocarcinoma with metastases to the kidney. And again, it remains to be seen whether uh, this is uh, one of the same cause revealing itself in different, with different morphologic features. Caseous lymphonitis typically, again, starts as a skin operation to travel to the draining lymph nodes. And uh, here's such a, a large lymph node. If one opens this lymph node on cut section, the lamination would be the key. Uh, and what appears to be looking maybe like a water bag associated with tapes was nothing but a cyst associated with the cranial mediastinum. One has to be very cautious to overinterpret changes associated with the apomasum in goats and not falling into the trap to call a tissue that is white glistening uh, and seems to enlarge and overaccentuate the apomasal fold to be lymphosarcoma. That's nothing but fat. Uh, likewise, in the heart, well-nourished goats will sometimes mimic something that uh, may be faultly interpreted as being white muscle disease or my myodegeneration. I learned these uh, two lessons by constantly making the mistake to overinterpret and think of diseases that did not exist and it's just nothing but fat. Yoni's disease in goats uh, does exist uh, and it again is it a, a chronic proliferative disease, uh, here nicely showing a lymphangitis associated with the lymphatic, the mesenteric lymphatics. Little nodules and granules uh, associated with the intestinal tract and a goat with diarrhea suggests the presence of imeria, imeria along the and on histopathology one can appreciate at various stages of the protozoan. A goat that 
is well nourished, uh, shows changes associated with the liver that may mimic a tumor but turn out to be an abscess. Uh, again, certain joints like the carpal joints uh, in goats uh, suggest the presence of a CAA virus, typically the carpal joint itself or the bursa overlying the carpal joint uh, is involved in a synovitis and ultimately arthritis. But a close contender and differential agent should be mycoplasma mycoid mycoides, variety mycoides, that one should think of. Uh, here again, the open joint to show a synovitis and an ac excess of fluid in CAA. ORF not only, the virus of ORF not, is not only associated with the oral cavity, but in goats may affect the skin of the udder. Mastitis in goats uh, is perhaps not that much of a problem as in cattle and sheep, but nonetheless, uh, the same organisms that cause blueback in sheep may be involved in the mastitis of goats and or gram-negative organisms. This was a very interesting case, a heavily and markedly enlarged udder weighing about 10 kilograms in a very small goat, uh, obviously caught the attention of the owner, the clinician, and uh, ultimately the pathologist. It really suggested a neoplastic involvement, but it wasn't. It was a very, very chronic fibrous mastitis, really, that in retrospect, I think, might be the result of a lentivirus infection, CAE. One has to think of that as well. An interesting scenario of twins showing schistosomus reflexus being characterized by an, a ventral abdominal slit that leads to the evisceration of uh, major internal organs and a deviation of the hind extremities to the dorsal aspects of the body. If the goat is kept as a pet goat and gets older and older, it does indeed develop uh, certain neoplastic growths. The most famous one linked to a certain breed of goats, the Nubian goat is known as lymphoma, as depicted here, craniate to the heart, phimoma. Uh, just like in the sheep, on occasion, goats do develop an adenocarcinoma, and it may be uh, a transmissible type of adenocarcinoma as well. Lymphosarcoma affecting the nasal passages and the skin, very bizarre, very bizarre location. More typically, internally involving uh, lymph nodes, and these are subaortic lymph nodes, kidney, uh, bone marrow. Uh, another case of a primary cholangiosarcoma metastasizing to intestinal tissue, very bizarre behavior starting out in the liver. A nephroblastoma obstructing the architecture and enlarging one kidney, metastasizing to the liver. And the mammary gland, so very bizarre behavior again. And then finally, adenotum, adeno, adenomas associated with pituitary may produce prolactin to induce what's called the milking buck syndrome. That's a very interesting scenario. Notice here, uh, this animal has both an udder that indeed produces milk and the phenotype of being a male, and indeed this was a male, uh, and it had a prolactinoma, a tumor associated with the pituitary gland uh, to create a functional udder, the milking buck syndrome. Strangely, a mast cell tumor associated with the skin, a set of adrenals to show a few chromocytoma on both sides, and then finally uh, a tumor associated with the thyroids to induce a adenoma or adenocarcinoma of the thyroids, and that is the end of my presentation. <laughs>